Hi OCR students, we're looking at paper 3 and we're trying to cover these 15 mark evaluate questions, very important questions within your paper 3, but actually very simple questions that come in section B of your paper 3 exam. You're going to get two of them, right? Remember that, two of them. And for each 15 marker, you're looking at 25 minutes. That's the only difficulty for me on these 15 markers, to make sure that you do a damn good job, you write in detail within the 25 minutes that you've got. Um, so 25 minutes for each 15 marker is what you're aiming for here. Uh, they will both come in section B within your paper 3, so you'll have extracts there as well, potentially, to help you answer that question. But in your mind, keep things simple. As always for these evaluate questions, once you've done your definition, it's just two-sided argument with a judgment. That's all you need to do. Let's go straight into the structure. So as always on these evaluate questions, no matter where they come up in your exams, you start with definitions. Define the key terms, all the key economic terms in the question, word for word perfect. Show off good knowledge at the start. Then go straight into answering the question on the one hand. You want to make two points on the one hand, and those points must be answering the question nicely here. What you're looking to do is to write nice solid paragraphs for each point you're making. Watch my video on how to write the perfect economics paragraph to understand how to nail these core skills in a paragraph perfectly. That video is very popular, make sure you watch that to gain further detailed understanding of how to write these paragraphs. But what, we, what you're looking to do, very basically, is to write your theory in serious detail. So at whatever point you're making, write that theory in loads of detail. Pretend like the examiner marking it is a non-economist forcing you to write in serious detail. So chains of analysis, every single part of the theory or a policy, let's say, or an argument on the one hand or the other hand, you want to be writing that in serious detail here. Serious analysis. Then you want to apply. Maybe the application is there in the case study. Maybe the question forces you to use the case study, in which case that's where you get your application from. But if your question is general and doesn't necessarily require the case study, require the extra material that you're given, then you need to come out with your own examples there. So application. And your application should back up the point that you're trying to make. And then you're looking to evaluate. I've made a very detailed video on how to evaluate what kind of evaluation points you can make and where you need to evaluate. Watch that video to gain proper understanding over how to evaluate perfectly. But you need to end your paragraphs, both points on the one hand, should end with an evaluative comment of some sort, which is developed as well. So those core skills, two points on the one hand. Then you move into on the other hand. Two points you're looking for here again, on the other hand now to go against whatever the question is asking. But crucially, you're still answering the question. You're looking for the same core skills, detailed analysis with chains, application maybe from the case study, maybe not, depends on what the question is asking and whether the application from the case study is useful, is relevant, is what's necessary or not. And then you're looking to evaluate in the same way as well. So two paragraphs, on the other hand, hitting all these core skills. You might want to use diagrams to back up your points on the one hand, to back up your points on the other hand. Absolutely, absolutely fine if that diagram is relevant to help you answer the question, then absolutely go for it. But make sure that your diagram is fully labelled, make sure it's accurate, and crucially, make sure that you refer to everything on your diagram. If you're shifting curves, why? If it's a market structures diagram, why have you gone to MC equals MR? Maybe that's profit max. You need to explain that. You, know? you need to um, refer to your axis. You know, why has the price gone up or the price level gone up? Why has quantity gone up or down? Why has real GDP gone up or down? Everything needs explanation, okay? on that diagram, only then you will get full credit for using the diagram. So once you've done your two points on either side uh, of the debate here, you then need to make your judgment. Your judgment needs to do two things well. You need to answer the question explicitly, so don't hold back, no sitting on the fence. Answer that question and then support it. Maybe you're supporting your answer with theoretical knowledge, maybe you're supporting your answer with application and theory. That would be the best way to do it, right? to answer the question and then support it with theory, but also application which proves that point. So whatever, question, whatever your answer to the question is, you need to give some support, some justification of why. Okay, so a couple of sentences is all you need, then you can move on. In 25 minutes, the examiner won't expect a really chunky judgment at all. But hit those two points and you'll gain full marks. Without this judgment, you won't hit the full marks on this question. Now, something else you need to consider in paper three with these 15 markers is, do you need the case study? Read that question carefully. If it requires explicit use, then yes you do. If it doesn't, then maybe the case study is not necessarily relevant, 
Uh, or maybe you need to hunt down in the case study where the application is. So think about very carefully how you're going to use the case study material here. Regardless though, application is so important, right? Your paper is called Themes in Economics. The examiner doesn't want you to answer these 50 markers without any application at all. That would be a pathetic thing to do. So make sure that application is there. It's very important. But just think tactically. How are you going to use the case study? Even if the question doesn't explicitly re uh, expect you to refer to the case study, maybe there is still something within there you can use. Maybe you've got your own knowledge as well which you can use. But application is very important for this part of Paper 3 in Section B here. So bear that in mind as well. That covers these 50 markers, very important questions in Paper 3. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you all in that video.